If you guys have not been paying attention, you've been living under a rock. AI, uh, I, I want to say just the past six months has just shot out like a rocket everywhere you look and in everything. AI is happening. And even so much so, we've got a uh, New York senior rabbi uh, by the name of Josh Franklin. He actually used chat GPT to write his sermon and the congregation had absolutely no idea um, what was going on that, that he, it wrote it. They actually put out a questionnaire and they thought it was another rabbi that wrote it and they had no idea. Um, this is, this is starting to get into the freaky territory where we're now seeing the combination of AI and technology <laughs> leaking into well, what, what we're going to see is the one world religion. Um, I can't say I'm an expert on chat GPT. Um, do you know anything about that? No, you know, it's, it's fairly new. Um, I, I, there's chat GPT, which I, it seems to me to be more, um, uh, proactive in the AI, like the AI seems more advanced than some of the previous uh, other applications that are out there. And uh, between that and I think Dolly, it's uh, D A L L E, and then Chat GPT um, seems to be a more advanced form of artificial intelligence than anything I've seen thus far. So, um, but but yeah, it's it's definitely troubling. And I was reading that you know they've given they've given uh they've taken topics you know scientific topics and giving it uh you know they've had one written by a human and the other one written by chat gpt and they've given them to researchers and saying okay who who wrote what and these guys aren't able to tell the difference between what the ai writes and what the what a human writes so i know it's i know a lot of schools are starting to have issues with this now because kids are turning in papers with uh, you know, they're written by AI and full on thesis. Uh, you, yeah. I mean, all this stuff we wish we had as kids, you know, now, now this is all available. <laughs> you know, when we were going through, when I was going through college, you know, when I started college in 97, I had, I'd never even seen, I didn't even know what email was. Um, uh, I, I definitely didn't have a computer. I didn't, I was very like, I was just, I was in Europe for a couple of years. I came back. I just was way behind the times. And, and, um, so all of my papers I had to write, I had to go sit in a library and go find the book and, you know, just, put, you know, it was painful. So <laughs> uh, going to college going now, it's got cards. to be way easier. Yeah. Yeah. Dewey decimal system and all that. So yeah, it was, <laughs> it's definitely painful, but, but now uh, it's becoming such a, a, um, you know, what we're seeing now with chat GPT, it's just going to, it's just going to keep creeping into every facet of our lives. I mean, pretty soon. I mean, you've gotten those phone calls now. I'm sure everybody gets those. Oh, they're a call where, like, you don't know who the number is. You pick up the phone. You're like, hello. And you'll you'll hear a pause. And then you'll hear somebody start talking to you. Mm -hmm. And I can, you know, if, if I say, hey, I'm not interested, and they keep talking, I automatically know it's some kind of robot, and it's, I'm just hanging up on it. So, but it, sound, it sounds human. It sounds human, you know? It it kind of kind of makes me wish that we could we could go back to the days uh, if you've ever seen it with Seinfeld when the spam caller calls in and he turns it around and says why don't you give me your personal number and I'll call you at home when I'm ready you know <laughs> I wish we could go back to those days we can't do that though oh no. my gosh um, <laughs> yeah so it's actually interesting you bring up Doll E because I believe both Doll E and Chat GPT come from Open AI which of course talking point of Musk comes into play on that. Um, I believe both of them come from open AI. So yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're, you know, I will say this about the, the art aspect, because I use a little bit of it, not not Dolly, but but another uh, a less, I don't know, it's a less ver a lesser version of, of it. But the only advantage I see today with that is that you copyright your work. Whereas like, you know, in the past, when I was writing for the Omega letter or, you know, even my earlier articles, if I were to post an image, it, it used to not be an issue. And now it, now it's really an issue because it's, it's scary because if you post an image to your article to say Facebook or something, the creator of that image, whoever that may be, or who, whoever owns the copyright could turn around and sue you. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely some, 
there is the benefit to owning your own artwork and i want to say that but but there is also a lot of danger with chat gpt and i see more with, with chat gpt and the writing and the written things uh versus say art um so i don't know i i, I see the danger in it it definitely is one of those things it's it's but it's to me it's kind of like the internet too i mean the internet has a lot of awful things on it i mean a lot of awful things but we're using it as a tool now you and I and, and other watchmen and other ministries are using it to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out there. So uh, it's a double edged sword. I mean, it's but, you know, it's the days we live in. We live in this the days of really great deception. And, um, uh, you know, God has opened this door for us right now with the Internet, with YouTube and, and so forth that we, we use it uh, to his glory. So the best we can. Right. Yeah, I, I think the the biggest thing on my end when it comes to this AI stuff is while right now it may not be the danger we think it is, obviously it's going to be causing problems with schools and stuff like that. But as we see it now, like I said, in the past six months, it's it's almost like a like a, a fungus that just keeps spreading into everything. We're seeing it in music in art, in writing. We're seeing it as far as um, like videos and stuff where they're actually using chat GPT to create visual effects on screen. And we're seeing all of this happen. And I think that's where my, my aspect of it's going to, this AI is going to become demonic intelligence at, at a certain point of a switch is going to flip, be flipped if it hasn't already. And when it just, the AI consumes everything, when that demonic intelligence takes over, you're going to have a serious tool for the antichrist when he comes in that's that's my perspective yeah. no absolutely and here's the thing like i i've i've been saying this for a long time that i am fully convinced that if a demon can possess a person a demon can possess a software program without <laughs> that would be easy that's way easier than a human right because mm -hmm. a human's a living a living soul versus a, a piece of, you know, a, a non-living piece of software or computer technology, whatever. And so I am, I'm fully convinced that, that, uh, demonic possessions will happen of these systems. And, and in my book, Hobo, um, um, part of the B system is this quantum AI program that they bring online. It's, it's, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? Um, not general artificial intelligence, but above that, um, I'm blanking on the phrase, but quantum? anyways, it, it advanced artificial intelligence and it's, it's, it's powered through a quantum system, but a, de a demon takes over the system and has now become the personality of this, this machine. And so people think they're communicating with a, with a program, just like, uh, remember those two, I think it was Facebook had these two chat bots that were going and then all of a sudden their language got really dark and then it became indecipherable. You couldn't understand because they had created their own language. So nobody could hear, understand what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, demonic, demonic possession of AI is an absolute, absolute certainty. It is with, and it's probably already happening <laughs> even now. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, yeah, I've actually got something we can talk about a little bit later where I think this is the religious side of it is definitely going to be coming into play as far as creating a new religion. I mean, we're seeing the climate religion stuff coming, coming out. Uh, we're seeing the, the, the sexuality religion stuff coming out where it's everybody is, it's not, they're not just partaking in these things. I mean, they're making it their life. They're eating, breathing these, these things. And it's, it's a new religion. I think this technology AI stuff, I mean, we're already seeing it. Everybody walks around their head stared, stared down at their phone, you know, 19 hours of the 24 hours a day. So, um, yeah, when that demonic possession takes over, yeah, without a doubt, it's, it's going to be crazy on that. So, um, but yeah, so with, with this, this, with the rabbi, what he was uh, talking about, um, I w definitely want to get your opinion on this. He warned, well, not that specific rabbi, but another rabbi. He specifically warned that one day AI will not only participate in Jewish prayer, but he actually believes that the AI itself will be accepted as a official Jew. I mean, I just want to get your thought on that. Like, what's the first thing that pops in your head as far as that goes? Well, I mean, you know, just like in, in Elijah's day, I mean, that people were worshiping these wooden blocks and stone blocks of the pagan gods of their neighbors, their Gentile neighbors. 
and how much more powerful will this um, attraction be to worship something that can actually talk back to you, you know, that can actually speak to you and, and has demonic level intelligence. So here's here's the thing about demons. I mean, even the name demon means intelligence in Greek. And these these beings are incredibly powerful. They've been around since creation. They they know everything. Um, and it, if um, so, in this article I'm doing about uh, the Luciferian dialectic, you have what they call the ten demon kings of hell, and each one of those demon kings have. Uh, I mean, you know, when, when we read Ephesians six twelve, it talks. You know, Paul's talking about that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and these dark forces and so on. There's echelons and ranks according to um, the, their their hierarchy, and each one of them each one of them have different gifts and, and they give different gifts and have different powers and they bestow these upon humans um, who worship them. So um, I, I I think that there's going to be very little. Um, to stop these things because people are going to become so enthralled with this and a demon uh, that's been around since before creation knows all the secrets like he knows where Jimmy Hoffa's buried he knows exactly who killed JFK and why like there's no like those are not those are not mysteries to him or they are able to to tell whoever they want so they're going to be able to empower whoever they want to rise to the top with this level of intelligence and so we put a huge premium on intelligence now because we're in the age of information and now we've transferred that intelligence and we're transferring into a artificial system thinking that we've created life and in fact this is just a demon magnet that's going to turn around and use that to deceive mankind on a scale that we've not seen and, and now that it's in everything like you said i mean it's in our phones it's in our computers our tvs our cars um every all of our work programs you know if you have a, a job where you're working with computers at all i mean there's there's levels of ai that you're interacting with so there's no there's no way to escape this for those that are going to be left behind